and I have a new system because it works. This is your wake up call. Good morning guys and happy vlogtober day 15. Today's video is not vlogtober themed, but I was talking about it on my Instagram stories a couple days ago where someone asked how much money I make on YouTube. And I asked if you guys would be interested in seeing some of that or like the behind the scenes and budgets and stuff like that. And literally it was 99% yes. So I thought we would sit down and budget mainly because I'm doing this anyways. And if you guys have been watching my plan with me videos, I'm sure you've seen that I usually put budget stuff before all of my paychecks. And that's when I sit down and budget out that paycheck. And so I'm doing that today because today is Thursday and I get paid tomorrow. So today, y'all's time. I just wanted to like take you guys through my process since you guys wanted to see that. Now, this is not the first budget video that I've done on my channel. Let me just look up because I, I know there's tons. So I have an easy way to make a budget that works for you guys. It came with a free Excel sheet that you guys can edit and create your own budget for. Highly recommend watching that one if you guys like the Excel version of it. I personally love writing out my budgets and everything. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing that on my iPad. I usually like using paper just because I'm a pen and paper kind of girl, but this is easier so that way I can screen record and share with you guys. I've done videos on how I managed to pay my own college tuition, if that is helpful, or if you guys are in like college, how I budgeted that. And also I have videos on different apps that I use. So again, different methods work for different folks. This is what works for me, but I have used apps that are really helpful. I've used Excel sheets that are helpful. I just like good old writing it down kind of thing. The budget method that I'm gonna be using is basically the cash envelope system with cash. So I'll show you like what my system looks like it's not actual envelopes that like I carry around in my purse by any means, but I'll show you what I mean. I kind of just wanted to make an updated one, even though basically everything I do is the same, but just in case you guys are new and you guys never saw these videos in the past, we're here to refresh you on how I budget, how I use the cash envelope system and all of that good jazz. Cause honestly, if you've never heard of it, I think it is the best system for keeping track of your funds and saving money, especially for folks who need it to be like visual because you're working with physical money. And I think that that is the best way to like really keep an eye on your spending because spending with cards and like credit cards and all of that kind of stuff is so easy just to like buy anything and everything. I will attest to that. So although I have already done this before, I'm again starting from the beginning for you guys. So we're gonna take this absolutely to the beginning, how I even create the budget. And basically I'm gonna look at my finances. So right now I'm just logging into my Huntington thing so I can view everything that I spent my money on. Before we dive, dive into that, we are gonna kind of separate our funds into different categories. And so basically you just wanna kind of jot down all the different areas that you usually spend money on or you think you spend money on or things that you know you're going to spend money on. And we're gonna call this our envelopes because essentially if you're doing the cash envelope system, you will have a different envelope for every category that you spend money on. This will all make sense soon if you're not familiar with the system, but just roll with me here. So I'm gonna start out with things that are just like givens that I know I'm gonna spend money on that probably you guys spend money on. And that is of course rent. We have electricity, Wi-Fi, student loans, phone bill, credit cards, literally list it all. You also wanna include in this column that I'm saying, like your givens that you always spend money on that are usually the fixed amounts. They don't necessarily change. Like yes, electricity might change, but you can usually bank on like how much that's gonna be. Rent is always the same. Your phone bill is usually the same, that kind of thing. You'd wanna include like your car insurance, car payments, regular insurance payments, anything that is like a bill that usually has a fixed rate. And then I'm gonna list all of the things that aren't fixed, but I still spend money on. And that would be like groceries, toiletries, restaurants. And I have different ones for restaurants and fast food because to me they're different. You can categorize these to fit your needs and whatever works for you. I'm also gonna have like coffee in its own thing because I don't usually get coffee that much. Dog stuff and cat stuff because usually those are different amounts every month. I also wanna have a separate thing for doggy daycare. We're gonna put shopping and misc. And this is just to start you off. You can always add to these lists because now that we have a good roundabout list here of what I usually spend my money on, we're gonna look at my bank statements. And usually I go back at least three months, if not more, whenever I'm creating a budget. You can go back like six months, basically the more the better, but at least three is typical for me. I can get a good idea of like how much money I spend on things. But this can be kind of tedious if you've never done this before, but I'm gonna pull out my statement from last month. And what you're gonna do is essentially every single charge that you have of money going out, of you spending money, you're going to allocate that amount to some sort of category that we have listed here. And basically you're just gonna tally up how much money you have spent for each 
each month in each of these categories. So you can see your average of what that thing usually costs you or how much money you're spending on that thing. So for coffee, you could be spending $50 one month, but then $150 the second month, but then $40 the third month. Maybe that second month was just like an outlier. You don't usually spend that much money, but that's where you could also go back another month or two months to really see where you lie. And your average is probably like $40, $45. So go ahead, pause this video, go through your last three months of big statements at least and find your averages per month. You're gonna keep them separate. Don't tally up into like one big number of how much money you spend in each category. And then we'll come back and I'm gonna do the same thing. Welcome back. Um, I hope you guys wrote everything down. I again like doing pen and paper. So I wrote down all of my envelopes or categories and literally just listed each number. So as I went down through each month, it was like 38, three, 48, six. And then when I got to the month, I crossed it off and then tallied up each month's total for all of the things and have it on two sheets of paper here. And this is just your starting point. So you can visually see how much money you're spending on all of these things in your life. Um, to me, this is the best part of budgeting because this is your wake up call. Cause when you really see the like, damn, I spent $200 every month on fast food or on Ubers or on drinks at a bar or whatever. Like there's going to be categories that you guys have that I don't have and maybe vice versa, but you can really see where your money's going. And that's either a good thing, a bad thing, or right where you want it. And that is what we're going to do next. Cause we're going to decide the average amount of money that we spend on each of these categories. If that is like just enough money, I'm good spending that much money. I'm spending way too much money on that thing. Or maybe I need to spend a little bit more. And that's what I'm going to do right here is looking at these numbers and how much money I'm spending on all of my stuff. I'm going to write it down on my handy dandy envelope sheet here of how much money do I actually want to budget for each category. And I'm actually going to start with the things that don't necessarily fluctuate that much because I can't control those amounts. And essentially I have to pay what those are like rent. Like you got to pay your rent kind of thing, fast food and what I spend on shopping and groceries, that kind of stuff I can change. So I want to start with what I can't change to make sure that I budget enough money for that kind of stuff. And then we will fill in our extra money or, you know, excess money from our paychecks and fill in the other envelopes of things that can fluctuate. What am I wanting to spend the rest of my money on? What do I kind of need to spend my money on? Like for us, I got to spend money on like dog food and cat food more than I have to spend money on coffee. You see where I'm going here. So let's start at the beginning here. Every month I need to budget $590 and 80 cents on rent. My electricity does fluctuate. And so for us, we're budgeting about $120 total a month for electricity. And I say total because Griffin and I are splitting costs. So for me, this is actually only $60 a month that I need to budget. But in total, we need to make sure that we budget about 120. Wi-Fi is a standard price every single month, which is $67.56, which means I'm going to be paying $33.78. Now my student loans are a little bit trickier and this is just for me because my guaranteed payment that I have to make, I think is only like $111 a month. That's like what I have to pay, but I usually pay more and that's just because I have the funds to do so and I'd love to get them paid off like ASAP. I'm gonna write down that my minimum payment that I have to be able to pay for is 120. Like if I, for whatever reason, I just can't do more, 120 is what I have to do. However, I would love to be paying 300 a month on my student loans if I have the extra money. And that's just for me. The same kind of goes with my credit cards. Those, you know, amounts fluctuate every month of like how much I put on my credit cards or how much I need to pay off every month kind of thing. So I'm actually just gonna leave that one blank because I alter that amount every month. And right now we're working on like my master budget. So it changes. We're just gonna leave that one blank. But if yours doesn't and you know you have to hit a 45 minimum like payment every month, write that down. But sometimes I don't have anything on my credit card and sometimes it's only like $14. So I do that on a case by case basis. And then my phone is a flat rate of $72. And what we're gonna do with that is basically add up everything that I just budgeted for my like static costs or my fixed costs here, which totals out to be $876.58. And that's important because much like you just went through all of your bank statements to keep track of all of your, you know, outs and expenses and how much money that was and put those into categories. We're gonna go back to those bank statements and basically take out all of those incomes. If you have multiple streams of income, obviously you wanna categorize those so you know how much money you're making from each of your streams of income. Like me, I have multiple streams, but if you just have one, you of course just wanna write down your checks for all three months going back or more months so that way you can average out how much money you're making. This is easier if you are in salary because you know your paycheck every time, but if you work hourly like Griffin and I do, our paychecks fluctuate. And sometimes if we have days off or if the shops are closed for a holiday, it could alter how much money we're making. So if you guys wanna pause this video again, go back to your bank statements and average out how much money you are making every month for the past like three, four, five, six months, however far back you guys want to go and then come back. Welcome back again. Once you have your average income that you're gonna be making every paycheck or 
every month, however you wanna budget. I budget per paycheck because my paychecks fluctuate, but again, if your salary, it's probably easier to budget monthly. But once you have that number, you are going to take your income number minus the number that we came up with before of your fixed like bills and everything. For me, that was the 876.58 number, and you will get what you are left over with. Whatever you are left over with is what you're gonna use to allocate into the different categories that do fluctuate, like groceries, toiletries, restaurant, fast food, coffee, and all of that. That is to make sure that you don't go over budget because of course, if you're spending more money than you're bringing in, you're running in a deficit and you're going into debt or I don't know how you're doing that. In an ideal world, you're spending less than what you make or what you're budgeting to make so that way you can save some. Obviously, that's not the reality for a lot of people. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, but at least you wanna like zero out. You don't wanna spend more than you're making. So that is how I make sure I don't do that is I figure out how much all of my fixed expenses are that I have to pay every single month, how much I'm making every single month, and then whatever I have left over is what I use for all of the other things. But again, I wanna focus on the important things like groceries, dog stuff, cat stuff, the things that you know we still need to live off of, like gas, that kind of thing. Everything else is essentially a luxury or things that we might not be able to do or we don't need if that month or that week we just can't afford it. So starting with groceries, Griffin and I have been doing HelloFresh and then we also have to buy like breakfast food and stuff like that. Our HelloFresh costs total $67.56 a week if we choose to do it some weeks we don't honestly which means my total for HelloFresh is 33.78 and if we're talking monthly which is how we did the other budget so I'm also going to do that here that means HelloFresh is going to cost me 135.12 a month but then also switching to just general groceries I'm going to highball it and say that we spend about $100 a week even though I know that's not true but that would mean that I pay 50 a week but that would also mean I'm paying 200 for the entire month for groceries and of course, as you're allocating money, you want to subtract from that number that we found before of your income minus your fixed expenses to make sure you're not going over. And after you subtract from this category, we move on to the next one. And you just basically plug and chug until you find that perfect scenario that, you know, you're paying for everything that you need to without going over budget. Best case scenario, you're also saving money. So go ahead and play with your numbers, see what you can work with, how much money you can allocate to each envelope without going over budget. I'm going to do the same. So let me do this and I'll be right back. Once you have figured out what you're allocating for each category, either you know bi-weekly per paycheck per month whatever's easier for you I kind of did both so I have like my weekly amount and then my total monthly amount and I'm gonna add up my monthlies just because I did the same with my fixed costs so I'm gonna add up all my pink numbers basically and our total is one thousand two hundred and five dollars and twelve cents again our goal is that both of my circled red numbers when you add those up it is less than my monthly income if it is not you need to figure out where you can take money out of for example i'd probably take it out of restaurants first or shopping that stuff is unnecessary fast food and coffee now let me show you the actual like cash envelope system that i have if you've watched previous videos i have had many 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 different ways of keeping up with this i've actually had envelopes in my wallet or in my purse before I've tried apps that basically work the same way as my cash envelope system and I have a new system because I like switching it up and I like figuring out what works best for me and I actually haven't set the system up yet but I'm going to tell you how I would do that. Essentially you want to get enough envelopes or in this case I got these from Staples. They're basically mini binder velcro folders so they fit into mini binders and then I just got this tub also at Staples that they all fit into but you want to have enough envelopes or whatever you're using to carry your money or to hold your money as you do categories. The ones that we wrote out. But you can also double up as long as you label your money correctly because for example I only have 10 but I do have about like 17 or 20 categories but some of them do go together so I can put the dog and the cat stuff in one envelope but I will just make sure they're separated either by like a paper clip or a piece of paper or whatever so I can tell which one is which. The same thing goes with like restaurants and fast food so you can definitely double up. I would just say make sure that you keep them organized that's the key to all of this and of course you can get a little label maker and label all of these and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to do that later today but how I actually work with this system is every time I get paid I sit down and I go off of my big budget that I made so essentially I already have one like the one I made with you guys today but again I just was starting from the beginning with you guys but I already have a master budget but every paycheck I'm gonna go through and make sure that I can follow my master budget because again I'm hourly so sometimes I might have less money than what my master budget budgeted for or I might have more which is you know perfect but sometimes I am less so I'm kind of working like under budget in a way and that's where I would fluctuate like maybe this paycheck instead of $20 going towards fast food it's only 10 
again, that kind of thing. But the key to making this work, which a lot of people don't like in today's day and age, and I understand, is to actually work with cash. Like it's called the cash envelope system for a reason. You put cash in an envelope and you work with it. Like that's how you spend money because it works. Like if you're watching this and you think that's just like way too much work, it is, it is work, but that's what makes it easier to stop spending as much money and to save money. Because when you're physically seeing money, like leave your wallet, you're less likely to spend it because you know you only have that $20 bill left. We already have all of our categories written out and everything so we know how much money is going to each category. Essentially what you wanna do is go to the bank. Usually I go inside if I need different kind of bills because usually like the ATM will only give you like 20s or 10s and stuff like that and I like to have smaller bills sometimes like fives and stuff. So I usually go in and I ask them exactly how much money I want and the amount of bills that I need. But let me show you some examples of how this actually works. Let's say that this is one of my envelopes for gas and I allocate every pay period, so I do this bi-weekly, every time I get paid $20 to my gas envelope. So I'm gonna put $20 bills in my gas envelope, close it, it's done. I also allocate every paycheck $5, so I have five ones here, for coffee. So if I wanna stop by McDonald's, get a large iced coffee, you know, it's usually only a dollar, like you can get a coffee every day instead of getting Starbucks, which is $6. Like you do have to be conscious of where you're spending your money at if you really are on a budget, like myself. And then I also have $50 going into my groceries every two weeks. And you're gonna do that for every envelope, but I'm just working with these three so you can see. There's money in each envelope, all of these are labeled, I know exactly where it's going to. This method does take a lot of discipline because you can essentially just break your budget and do whatever the hell you want to, but that's obviously not the point. So once it goes into an envelope, my rule is that it doesn't come out unless it's being spent on that thing. So even if I have 20 bucks inside of this envelope and $5 in the other one, but I really want to go get coffee at Starbucks, but I only have $5, but I could pull from the 20 and like put the chain, but it, no, this is for gas and this is for coffee, that's it. Now for me, since I work on my envelopes bi-weekly or every paycheck, basically my envelopes start over for me. And by that you can do one of two things. One will save you the most money and one will just allow you to live a better life. I don't know how to put that, but like just have more money to spend. So you need to decide if you're doing this to save money or spend money just on a better budget. Let's say I just got paid again and I ended up not actually needing to go get gas because I worked from home both two weeks. So I still have $20 in this envelope, but I'm about to put another $20 in here. One option would be to keep this 20 in there and then put another 20 in there. And now you got $40 for gas. And you can just keep building up this envelope until you have like $100 of gas. And that's when you decide, I wanna go on a road trip. And now I have gas money for that. Like that's how you would save money for a trip, for example. But the other way to do it, if you're just trying to save money in general or maybe to pay off debt or student loans and stuff like that, at the end of the two weeks when I get paid again, I still have a 20 in here, but I'm about to put another 20 in here. Whatever's left over in all of my envelopes, I personally take out and then I put into my savings account. If I didn't use it in the two weeks, I lose it. That's basically my mindset and I promise you it works. But again, you can take your leftover five bucks of coffee, leave it in there, put another five bucks in and that way this week you can get one Starbucks coffee because you have $10 now. Now I'm sure you guys are going to ask so I want to address it. Marissa, like how do you spend the money if it's in this like giant envelope? One, you could keep your gas envelope in your car so it's just ready for you in your car and like your glove compartment or something like that. I've done that before. But two, usually I keep everything at home because that's also a better way not to impulsively spend money. Like if you're just out and you're like, ooh, Taco Bell sounds great right now. But if you don't have your fast food folder, you can't get Taco Bell. So I leave them all at home and that means that I have to plan out my days and plan out where I'm gonna spend money and what I'm gonna spend money on. So that way I can plan ahead and bring that money with me. But if you're working with cash and the cash isn't on you at all times, you're a lot smarter with your money and you don't spend impulsively. You have to plan and you have to budget. That doesn't mean that obviously sometimes I don't spend money when I don't bring an envelope with me and that stuff I'll put on my like credit card and stuff like that. But my credit card is there for emergencies. So if I absolutely need to, because I didn't plan ahead or I forgot my folder and I don't have gas money, I could get gas. Like I'm not without money, but I don't make that a habit because I don't want to put money on my credit card. That's kind of the system that I do and how I work with it. I hope this video made sense. Every time I film one of these like budget videos, I'm always like, I hope that helps. I know sometimes things make sense to me or I might not explain it that well. So if you have any questions, please comment them down below. Slide my DMs on Instagram or anything like that. I'd be happy to help. I was also thinking about, cause I saw someone else do this, making it kind of like a series-ish on my Instagram, whether that's like real or IGTV, but to like budget stuff and like, you know, stuff my envelopes with you guys or cue you guys in and basically just doing this on a more of a regular basis so you can see real time how it's going or like what I'm doing and how I alter. So let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in if you guys wanna see more of this like on a regular basis rather than just this video that maybe doesn't make sense. But like I said, other budget videos or cash envelope system videos, those will be linked down below if you guys wanna watch my past ones if those also help you or if you want the Excel version of all of this. It'll all be down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I love you guys. 
love you guys so much more than you'll ever know and i'll see you in the next video bye